Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll do some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number. 68. Page 68, multiple choice problem, beginning with number 40. After, after having watched this video, if you found it helpful, if you find it useful, and if you decide that you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me as a tutor, you can send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com and we'll see what we can do. Let's begin. Number 40, we are given a triangle that looks something like this. This is P, Q, R, we are told that this is 8, we are told that this is 6, and what else we are told? And we are told that it is in fact a right angle triangle. Let's see what they tell us. They tell us Mary walked P to Q to R. And we are told that Ted walked P to R directly. They're both going to R except Ted went directly from P to R, Mary went from P to Q and then to R. The question simply is Mary's walk Mary's walk exceeded Ted's walk by what percentage? That's all it is. Let's see very quickly what we can do here. So, Mary walked from P to Q, P to Q, we are P to Q right here, P to Q we are told is 8, and then she walked from Q to R, which we are told is 6, so she walked 14 miles. How long, how far did Ted walk? He went from P to Q directly. That's what we have to figure out. Now, we could use Pythagorean theorem and figure it out because it's a right angle triangle, but I hope that you're quick enough to realize that it is a 3-4-5 triangle incognito. It is a 3-5 triangle incognito in disguise. As you can see, this 6 is simply 3 times 2 and this 8 is simply 4 times 2. So it's 3, 3, 4 and this is going to be 5 times 2. P to R is 10. P to R is 10. And if you want to do it out of Pythagorean theorem, that's fine also. It's not a big deal. It's not, it's not going to take that long. It's simply 36 plus 8 is 64. As you can see, 36 plus 64 is 100, which is where we get the 10 because it's a square of uh, 10 square is 100. So Mary's walk exceeded Ted walks by what percentage? Well, Mary walked 14 miles. 14 versus 10. 14 is 4 more than 10. 4 is simply 40% of 10. Mary walked 40% more distance than Ted did. That's all it is. She walked 40% more. All that fuss. All that fuss about very simple thing. Let's go on. Number 41. In number 41, we are told that x is a positive integer. x is a positive integer. And the question is which of the following, which of the following cannot, cannot be the value of x or rather y which are the following cannot be the value of y and we are told that y equals 4 4 is to x minus 3 we are told that y equals 4 is to x minus 3 Let's see what we can do. The simplest, quickest way to solve this problem is to simply plug in numbers. As long as x is positive and it's an integer, if x has to be positive and it has to be an integer, the place to start, logical place to start would be 1. And see what happens. Here are the answer choices A, B, C, D, and E. And we'll cross them out as we go through them. 1, 7, 13, 61, 
and 253 for strange strangely enough 253 those are the answer choices let's see what we can do all of these answer choices all of these numbers that we see in the answer choices obviously they are there for a reason let's begin shall we let's plug in numbers let's plug in x one for one for x we get four minus three is one which means y y can be one question here is which of the following cannot be the value of y y can be one it can be one let's plug in two so 4 squared, 16 minus 3 is 13, y can be 13. 4 to the third minus 3, 4 to the third is 64, 64 minus 3 is 61, it can be 61 and so on and so forth. You will see this one will also work. 4 is to 4 minus 3, 4 is to 4, I hope you are able to see immediately that 4 is to 4 is same as 16 squared. Because 4 squared squared, this is simply 4 squared is squared. And I hope you know your squares. 16 squared is 256. 256 minus 3 is 253, which means y can be 253 also. The only value among the five, among the five values that were given, the only value that y cannot be is 7. Given the fact that y is equal to 4, 4 is to x minus 3, and x has to be a positive integer. 42. Let's see what we can do. 42 is not a very straightforward simple problem. 1 minus 1.25 we are told times n equals 1. 1 minus 1 minus 1.25. Well, 1 minus 1.25 is just 0.25, which is just a which is just a negative one quarter. Negative one quarter times n we are told equals 1. What can we do next? Let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this negative 4 from the bottom. Let's multiply both sides by negative 4. If you multiply both sides by negative 4, this, this negative 4 right here, let's put a negative in the bottom here, this negative 4 is going to cancel out with that one, and 1 times n is just 1, n equals negative 4. So, nothing to it. Very straightforward, very simple. Let's go to the next one. 200, or oh, oh, 43 rather. 43. Oh, 43 is going to take some, some explanation. 43 is going to require some explanation, so, so be patient with me. It says, quotient, quotient, when x is divided by 2 third is 9 halves. Question simply is what is x? What is x? What does this term mean, quotient? What does it mean? That's the important part. We have to know that thing. Quotient simply means simply means the result of a division problem. For example, for example, quotient when x is divided by, let's, let's put in something else here in a different color, different number. Quotient when x is divided by 3 is 5. Let's see what that means. Let's see what that means. If we have changed the problem. We have changed the problem. Now the problem reads quotient, which means simply the result. When x is divided by, when x, we're going to divide our x, when x is divided by 3, is 5. What do you suppose x is? What do you suppose x is? x must be 3 times 5. That's what it is. The same thing is going on here. Here we are told that when x is divided by 2 third, when x is divided by 2 third, we are told, just like here, in this with this thing we are told that when x is when x is divided by 3 the result was 5 you see when x is divided by 3 which is what we did here when x is divided by 3 the result was 5 the quotient was 5 which is what this was obviously in that case x must equal 3 times 5 so when x is divided by 2 third the result is 9 halves question simply is how much is x 
It's very simple, very straightforward. We need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of, get rid of this fraction from the bottom. Let's multiply both sides by two thirds. There we go. Now we have two thirds here on the bottom. We have two thirds on the top. If it makes it easier, put a one in the bottom of it. Two thirds are going to cancel out, and x is simply nine halves times two thirds. And twos are going to cancel out. It's just nine divided by three, which is just three. The answer is x is three. X is three, and that's all there is. That's how simple it is. Number forty-four. Number forty-four. So what does incognito mean? Incognito means in disguise. What I, the way I used the word a little while ago is that 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 triangle that was given to us was a three-four-five triangle incognito in disguise. The three-four-five triangle in the exam doesn't actually appear as three-four-five. Look at me, I'm three-four-five. It appears in disguise. Instead of three and a four, we have a six and an eight, and that's what it was. I'm trying to very quickly, if I can, find out which day we learned it, because I know we did learn the word incognito in our vocabulary lessons. And if I can quickly find out, I'll tell you. If not, then, then so be it. Uh, if it takes a little bit longer, then... Oh, there we go. Page... Day 40. Day 42. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, just search for vocab GMAT vocabulary words. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day 42, and put my name next to it, Keshwani. And that's all. It will pop right up. Watch that video. You will learn that word and perhaps several other words. It all depends on where, where you are in your vocabulary. Number 44 simply says, we have a sphere with radius r in a cube. In a cube with edges of length e. The question is, what's the relationship? between the, let, the variable r and e. So let me explain to you what's going on. It's not going to look very pretty. I'll do the best I can. So we have a cube. We have a cube here. Let's draw a cube. Let's just draw a tiny cube. It's a cube and inside it we have a sphere. Instead of drawing a sphere, which is very difficult to draw, I'm just going to draw a two-dimensional circle. I'm just going to draw a two-dimensional circle because that's what it is. Th this picture that you see there, which is two-dimensional, is not two-dimensional, it's actually a ball. We have a ball inside a cube, a box. Uh, not a rectangular box, but a square box. A box, wooden box, which is a square, which is a cube, which means all the sides are equal. And in it, we throw a ball in it. A ball fits in perfectly. It fits in perfectly such that it is, oh, I left out something, sphere with a radius r, oh, I left out something very important, sphere with radius r is inscribed, is inscribed in a circle, which is a fancy way of saying that it fits in perfectly, it touches, it touches the wall. Question is very simple, with the edges of length e, this length right here from here to here is e, now what do you suppose that is? That edge that you see there from here to here is just a diameter of it, which is simply a diameter. And diameter we know is simply 2 times r. This is the radius of the circle. Radius of the circle is r, the diameter is e, so e equals 2 times r. Is that the answer? No, they, they want to do it the other way around. So if e equals 2 times r, then r must equal half of e, which of course it does. R equals half of E because E in this case is the diameter and of course we know radius is half of diameter. Nothing to it. Number 45. Number 45. 
Before we do number 45, I'm going to put down something on the blackboard. If you're not very good at division, uh, dividing numbers by hand, and if you reach, if you find yourself reaching for the calculator for very simple division, well then you have to change that habit because calculator is not what you're going to have in the exam. You have to be able to solve simple division by hand. And if you're not very good at it, this is what I would like you to watch. Just type in basic math, of course with my name, always put my name in there. Kashwani, basic math, day 25, day 27, and day 92. Just watch this video, you might get something out of it, you might learn how to how to uh, devise simple numbers. Now this last one, day 92, actually is the fifth in the series of division quiz, I called it. This is number five, and if you're, in, if you're interested, you can find the other four, for, other for yourself in the same series. It's a series of basic math. I made 200 videos where I cover, as it says, basic math. Let's see what, what's going on here. Because that's what we're gonna have to do here. We're gonna have to do a simple division. We are told here that the price goes up from $1.65 to $1.82. And last week we are told, last week I paid $26.40. So I'm telling you, I'm coming up to you and I'm telling you that the gas station where I go to fill up my car, it used to be $1.65 for a gallon last week. This week they raised the price to $1.82. I further want to tell you that last week I paid $26.40. The question simply is, what I'm asking you is, how much more, how much more I will pay this week if I were to buy for the same amount of gas? How much more, how much more would I end up paying if I were to buy the same amount of gas that I did last week given the fact that the price has gone up from $1.65 to $1.82. Let's see what we can do. So the first thing we need to figure out is how many gallons I bought. That's the first thing before we worry about how much it went up. How much it went up is very easy. $1.65 it used to be in $1.82 so it's 82 minus 65 12 minus 5 is 7 and 7 minus 6 is 1. It went up by 17 cents. Price went up by 17 cents per gallon but the question is how many gallons did I buy last week? The only way we can figure out how many gallons I bought last week is to divide the amount that I paid last week, 26.40, by $1.65, and that will tell us how much gallons we bought last week. Let's, let's, let's begin, shall we? We're going to do that on the top here because we need the room. We need the room. We don't need this either. So here we go. So we have multiply, first thing we're going to do is multiply top and bottom by 100 so that we can get rid of this decimal. So it becomes 2640. I should write it a little bit lower because we're going to need the room. So it becomes 2640 over 165. Let's begin this story, shall we? Let's begin this story. Stay with me in this story, okay? How you start and what you start with makes no difference at all as long as you do the proper work. Any common factor that you find between top and bottom, you can start the story. So let's begin. I see a 5 here, I see a 0 here. They're both multiple of 5, obviously. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 16 have? How many 5, first of all, how many 5 does 1 have? 1 has 0 5. 1 has no 5. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. 16 has 3 5. 3 5 is a 15. After we take away 15 from the 16, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 15 again. And that 15 has 3 5. In other words, 33 times 5 is 165. Since we divided the top, since we divided the bottom by 5, we must divide the top by 5. Let's begin the story. How many 5 does 2 have? 2 has no 5s. 2 has no 5. It's too puny to have any 5s. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 26. How many 5 does 26 have? 26 has 5 5s. Five. 5 5 is a 25. After we take away 25 from the 26, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 4s and becomes a 14. 14 has 2 5s, as we all know. 14 has 2 5s. 2 5s are 10. After we take away 10 from the 14, we have a remainder of 4. What happens to that 4? 4 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 40. 4 and 0 becomes 40. And 40, we know, has 8. 8 5s. In other words, 
528 fives will give you 2640. Let's keep going. 33 is very simple to see that it's divisible by 3. Is the top number divisible by 3? How do we know if a number is divisible by 3? Which is what you're going to learn here. A number is divisible by 3 if the sum, sum, sum of its digits, of its digits, if the sum of the number of, if the sum of its digits of a number is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. 2 plus 5 is 7 and 7 plus 5 is 8, 8, 7 plus 2 plus 5 is 7 and 7 plus 8 is 15 and we know 15 is divisible by 3 therefore this top number is divisible by 3. Do you understand? Let's divide top and bottom by 3 shall we? So divide bottom by 3 of course it's just 11. Pay attention here. How many 5's does, how many 3's does 5 have? 5 is 1 3. After we take away 3 from the 5 we have a remainder of 2. What happens is that 2? 2 goes and joins the 2 becomes a 22 and 22 has 7 3's. 7 3's are 21. After we take away 21 from 22 we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. And 18 has 6 3's. And bottom we have 11. Let's divide top and bottom by 11, shall we? It must go into 11 because that's how the things are working out. Let's divide top and bottom by 11. If you divide 11 by 11 you get 1. How many 11 does 17 have? 17 has 1 11. After we take away 11 from the 17 we have a remainder of 6. What happens to that 6? That 6 goes and it becomes, joins this 6 and becomes 66. And 66 has 6 11. Voila! We bought 16 gallons last week. Price has gone up by 17 cents. Price has gone up by 17 cents. We multiply the 2 and that will tell us how much more we're going to do. How much more we're going to pay. I'm not going to multiply the 2. I'm too lazy. I know 16 squared. I know my square. You, you have to know some basic things if you're going to sit for the exam. You must know your squares by heart. I know my squares and I know 16 squares. I know 16 squares. Again, I shouldn't have to write this down on a blackboard like a baby. I should, I should be able to just speak on a normal page. 16 squares is 256. Do you understand that, right? So 16 times 17 is simply 256 plus 16. Because 256 represents 16 16. We don't have 16 16. We have 17 16. So just add one more 16. Oh, sorry. 12. That's a 2. That's a 2, and then we get a 12, carry 1, that becomes a 7, there we go. We must, we must pay $2.72 more than what we paid last week. We have to pay $2.72 more than what we paid last week. Forty-six. And it goes, this division thing that I did goes much faster if you don't have to speak at the same time. If you can just pick up speed, it goes much faster. <clears throat> the very last problem on that page, number 46, it says that up to, up to 75 messages will pay 20% less than the standard rate of ten dollars. Apparently they have some promotion going on where they say that up to 75 messages our standard rate is ten dollars up to 70 message up to 75 messages. The regular rate they used to charge ten dollars for this for the first 75 messages. Right now they're running a running a sale and they said instead of ten dollars you're only going to pay eight dollars for the first 75 messages. Let's see what happens after 75 messages. What if you make more than seven? What if you send more than 75 messages? It goes on to tell us that above 75, above 75, I didn't mean to write it way in there. If you have above 75 messages, you will pay this many dollars per message per message. The question simply is, what's the cost of 95 messages? 95 messages. But the first 75 messages is very straight. First 75 messages, you're going to get 20% less than the standard rate of $10. 20% less than the standard rate of $10 is simply $8. You would, you would have paid $10 for the 75 messages, but they have a sell, 20% off. So if you take 20% from the $10, we get $8. So that was the easy part. 
So we have 95, 95 messages. For the first 75 messages, we're just going to pay $8. What about the remaining 20 messages? Well, we just multiply this by 20. If you were to multiply this by 10, this decimal place will move to forward and become 65 cents. We don't have 10, we have 20, so instead of 65 cents, it's just going to be $1.30. It's just going to be $1.30, and therefore we will pay a total of $9.30. $9.30. And 30 cents. That's the end of that page and since that's the end of the page it seems like a logical place for us to stop. We'll meet again tomorrow as always and when we meet tomorrow we'll work on some data sufficiency problems. As, as you know now, by now, we alternate. We're going to work on data sufficiency problem and that way we make progress uh, uh, on, on both of those sections. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Again, if you wish to get hold of me for any reason at all, just send me an email, kishwaniprep at icloud.com. I'll be more than happy to do what I can. Alright? Bye now.